Now, it's Lunchtime with Ira. Live. Yeah, welcome to Lunchtime with Ira, live from the Las Vegas Hilton, where each week we enjoy lunch with the entertainers and personalities who make Las Vegas the most exciting city in the world. Our show comes to you from Shimmer Cabaret, home to Menopause the Musical, Joe Piscopo, and Sunset Strip. And my first guest is international burlesque queen Dita Von Teese, who is featured and stars in Crazy Horse Paris, at the MGM Grand's Crazy Horse Theater, and that's on 10.30 p.m. April 16th, 8 and 10.30 p.m. on April 18th and 19th, and also April 22nd through 23rd. And Dita, welcome to Lunchtime with Ira. Thank you. Thank you. So you are the international queen of burlesque. How is it that you started down this road? Um, well, I, I guess I was fascinated with movie stars from the 30s and 40s from a young age when I was a little girl. My mother liked old movies, so I, I watched old movies. And um, I always had an obsession with that era. And eventually, I started recreating vintage pinups. I made a website, Dita.net. And I started creating pinups for that website, um, all nostalgic pinup. And while I was looking and researching pinup photos, I, I came across burlesque dancers because most of the girls that posed for men's magazines in that era were, were strippers from that time. So I started researching burlesque and you know, I, I decided that it was a good connection because it was back in the day between pinup and burlesque and so I decided to embark on my own burlesque career. And it's been a, a successful one. You were the first uh, star in, in The Crazy Horse in Paris. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Uh, well, I've I was a big fan of The Crazy Horse from a young age. I remember seeing a little picture in, a, in a, an old Playboy magazine that belonged to my father, and it was a picture of the girls in the lineup, and it talked about The Crazy Horse in Paris, and I, I really wanted to go there and see that show, just based on this little tiny picture. And so when I went to Paris the first time, when I was um, 18 or 19 years old, one of the first places I went was The Crazy Horse. And I've seen the show maybe 30 times between Paris and Las Vegas. You know, we're lucky enough to have the a replica of the theater, which has been there since 1951 in Paris. Um, so they've made a replica here at the MGM. And um, this is, I did the, the uh, I was the first guest star in The Crazy Horse in Paris um, in, I guess it was October. And so here I am doing the same show here at the MGM. Do you find the difference between Paris and Las Vegas a little bit uh, of a disconnect? Well, it's much different because I think, you know, in, even though Las Vegas is, is Sin City and all, in Paris, this um, art of the nude cabaret that is a national treasure in Paris, and it's sort of hard for Americans to understand how a nude cabaret can be, um, you know, so mainstream. And so it's a little bit different. You know, the French public is very familiar with the crazy horse. It's a, it's a landmark, really. I think, though, with uh, given the number of visitors we have to Las Vegas, and they come from all over the world, uh, and obviously across the nation, that probably most people at this point would be very familiar with the Crazy yeah. Horse and that whole the whole art of burlesque. I, I was intrigued by something that you said when you mentioned about the era that you mm -hmm. admired. Have you ever thought thought it through as to what it was that struck your fancy? Was it an evocative theme, or mm -hmm. was it something more intellectual, or was it a combination of the two? Well, for me, it was really the era speaks to me in a way um, that the style was something really special, the, 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 the elegance and femininity, and it was a very sexy era, actually. Um, and as far as burlesque, I just felt that it was sort of people are, are missing the fact that striptease has a great history that, that started in, in America, basically. And so it made me a little bit upset that people aren't understanding the history that, that striptease has. And that there were great stars that came out of striptease, like Gypsy Rose Lee, who they made films about and, um, and who starred in films. And I think that it's, it's a little bit sad that people equate strippers with just lap dancing and pole dancing. And, and nothing, I have nothing against that, that they're all very relative, of course, if you ask me. Um, but I just think people should understand that strip, the word stripper is not a bad word. Speaking of relatives, uh, have you had your parents come and see your, your performances? Yeah, my, my, my mother was here last night. She's, my parents have seen me perform lots of times. I always say I wouldn't uh, do anything on stage. I wouldn't do in front of my mother. So, um, and my father is coming tonight. I have lots of, you know, my whole family has seen me perform. I bet their, their take on you, and, and, it's pro and I, I may be slightly off, but I think that they would look at you and say that you have tremendous focus because you were intrigued by a particular era of time mm -hmm. 
and decided that's what you wanted to do. And mm -hmm. you, you just were focused on that element. Would that be a correct mm -hmm. analysis? That's definitely correct. I, I, I always did it because I enjoyed it. I didn't really expect it would, that it would bring me here or that I'd have the, same, the kind of success I have. I just did it because it was fun. And I think that's really the key with anything you do. If you do something because you love it, then that's how you, you achieve success eventually. I think people can see that it comes from your heart instead of something you're doing for the money or doing for the fame. Now, your name, your, your born name was Heather Sweet. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you're out of Michigan. Yeah. So it's quite a leap from Michigan, I would think, to where you are today, both yeah. in terms of style uh, and, of course, the era as well. Mm -hmm. So when did the change come from Heather to Dita? Well, I just really, I haven't changed at all. <laughs> my personality, I've changed my appearance and, and I basically created a character I always wanted to be. You know, living in, I lived in a farming town in Michigan and there wasn't a lot of glamor there and I was, completely engrossed with these old films and I wanted I wanted to be like those women and so I basically promised myself at a young age I was going to to be who I wanted to be and you know it's it's not as though I packed up and left Michigan and moved out on my own my, my father got a job in in California and so that was why I, I moved um, so it's not that dramatic of a story but um, so you said something interesting that you wanted to be who you wanted to be and I, I think that Back to the, one of the original questions was that whatever struck you about the era resonated within you. It wasn't just a decision, oh yeah, well I'll do this or I'll yeah. be that. It obviously uh, spoke to you internally or yeah. emotionally in some way yeah. that it's consistent with who you felt you were and who you are today. Yeah, there's just, there's no line between Heather Sweet and Dita Von Teese. It's sort of, I, I again went with the whole idea of the old movie stars, most of the great icons um, from the films of the era. No one used their real names. It was part of the mystique of creating this whole persona. And, and you know, I, there's not two personalities or anything like that. It's just a, the name. It's, it was something that I did that was fun at the time. When I was putting all this together, it was really a hobby more than a career. I didn't think I was going to be <laughs> Dita Von Teese for, you know, 17 years later. It is an amazing journey. Do you... Um, when you were mentioning about the movies and you used to see the old movies, was that, that, that you were watching them at home with your parents or mm -hmm. did you actually go to a movie theater and see them or just the reruns of the old films? And, just and old films on the Turner Classic Movies and those movie channels and um, videos. But uh, no, I, I rarely remember going to the movie theater when I was a little girl. I was more interested in the old movies than, than the movies that were out of that time, like E.T. and all those kind of <laughs> movies that I rarely saw. Um, right. I rarely saw well, you don't look movies. like an alien, so I could see why you wouldn't yeah. want to do E.T. Yeah. Well, that the, didn't uh... have the, <laughs> the same effect. 